Good afternoon, everyone. This is Ruth helping present for Group 5, the English 348 um, sort of group discussion for April 8th, 2020. We're going to be continuing to talk about Harriet and Jacob's incidents in the life of a slave girl. So please come along. So we're going to start with last week with some of the questions from Dr. Wheelock, sort of a, do a review of what we've done previously. And um, questions that he brought up before included, what does resistance entail? Is resistance gendered? And he did assert that in case, this case it definitely is. Uh, did Jacobs love Mr. Sands? Is love too much like slavery at this point in her life? How does her multiracial status and lighter skin affect her life as a slave? And what constitutes freedom? And was the crawl space she was in for those seven years a prison, or are there elements of freedom there? Also from last week, there was a question Dr. Willock put a pin in, and that was, what is Jacob's relationship with her children, and how does that relationship sustain her? Um, we're going to come back to this question and incorporate it into one of our questions. Um, so our class discussion conclusions from last week included that Jacobs is an incredibly shrewd and resourceful woman, um, that she also has amazing strength and ability to endure, that uh, Jacobs unfortunately was living through some incredibly terrible situations and had to make some difficult choices to try to make the best of those situations. Um, that she, in the case of Mr. Sands, that she ultimately still found love a bit too much like slavery and that this had to involve some cunning and watching out for her own best interests. Um, and that freedom itself is gendered, sexualized, fluid, and in this case especially tragic. So, the loophole of retreat. Um, Coming back to chapter 21, Jacobs is inside that cramped crawl space where it's not just uncomfortable, but it's vermin ridden. She's being stung, like it can get very hot and very cold. And it ultimately sounds like these incredibly like unbearable conditions. However, she said, yet I would have chosen this rather than my lot as a slave. And that's from chapter 21. And that will help lead us into our discussion questions, or so that's something I want you to keep in mind. And our first discussion question is on family. How does Jacob's relationship with her family sustain her while in hiding? And please do consider her family, uh, different members of her family, this including like her relatives who knew she was there and helped visit her and um, feed her and sustain her more directly, as well as those who did not like her children. Um, how did each type of relative support her in their own way? Um, how did her and then as her children were not only a support, how did her children motivate Jacobs to also then leave her hiding and escape? Um, from chapter 29 on page 458, I was anxious to watch over my children and protect uh, them so far as I was able. Sorry for the typo. And of course, we will discuss this first question in class, but in video format, let's continue. So our second question on always running. Why is Harriet and Jacobs always running? Or why is this particular narrative of a woman where she is always running? She cannot find comfort like her male counterparts, like Douglas, Walker, and Equiano. Uh, for example, in chapter 36, Dr. Flint is now aware of where Jacobs is living as a free slave in the North, and Jacobs reflects and says, to be torn from a comfortable home and all my plans for the welfare of my children were to be frustrated by that demon slavery. On to our third question, which is on home. What does home mean to her, despite a constant danger to her family and the need to pack up and move within a moment's notice? Um, in chapter 40, page 485, I immediately informed Mrs. Bruce, if there is a possibility of saving you, you shall be saved. And this passage was pulled as a summation of how she has this ever-present fear of being torn once again from her family and home, and how there is 
sort of a repeating theme of her needing to sacrifice a, com a more comfortable position in order to remain safe and whole with family. And we have a fourth question <laughs> on kindness, sort of a bonus question. How does Harriet Jacob's caution towards kindness reflect her experiences as a former slave? From chapter 38, this Mr. Thorne, Mrs. Hobbs will tell you all about it. Um, this referring to a false kindness from the past of slavery contrasted against numerous examples of goodwill from people further north throughout the text. How um, Jake, sort of this contrast of Jacob's living with constant fear despite the how some humans are full of goodwill. So thank you very much for joining us for this discussion. Um, we hope that everyone is doing okay during uncertain times because it's a bit difficult at the present, but we want to spread a tiny bit of positivity here as Jacob's experiences can provide some context on how terrible human cruelty and suffering can be, but that at this point it still provides some insight and room for gratitude um, because we do have some positive things in our lives today that certainly Jacobs did not have. It's sort of an opportunity to be grateful. Um, and of course, this is not me meant to diminish anyone's current suffering, but to provide some possible comfort because these times can be distressing. And again, just a little bit of comfort. And of course, suffering is not a competition. All suffering is suffering. Um, and of course, our references involving our text, as well as Dr. Wheelock. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, this, uh, this video is also going to be on a website, since that will be easier to download than slides. And of course, a link 